An anti 2A gun tuber. Let's expose this guy. You? Wait, you? A couple of weeks ago, I put out a gun fails video. In this gun fails video, I showed several unsafe acts, unsafe things, and people just being all around goobers with guns. Well, in that video, I was trying to keep it fast paced. So uh, there weren't a lot of instances for context except for where I wanted them. In one of the parts, I played a snippet of a fella sitting on a motorcycle in traffic. He reached back, touched his backpack, and his gun fell out. And this is what I said. But now here we are, we've got a Tesla cam, and this fella's on his motorcycle, and he messes with his backpack, and boom, his gun falls out. Seriously, dude, if you have the money for a gun, you need to have enough of a... Uh, I guess disposable income to properly secure that gun. Now that was said with very little context. I'm gonna bring this full circle here in just a little bit. But now I got a couple of comments and those comments, I'm not being snarky to the guys, I'm not being ugly, but the comments kinda led to me being an elitist, you know, and having an anti 2 a stance because I said that the fella should have the means to secure the gun. Well, quite frankly, he should have the means to secure the gun, but uh, you know, I replied to the comments, but then I got an email. And with this email, that kind of led me think, well, maybe instead of typing words back that can be taken out of context, I'm just gonna make a video and then I'll just link this guy, the video link. But uh, what I got here in the email is, hello, Pat, I've been watching your videos for a while now. One statement rubbed me the wrong way. You stated that if a person has the money for a gun, they should also have the disposable income to properly secure that gun. It sounded very anti-2A. That statement sounds like it came from our Democrat-controlled White House or for any town for gun safety. Many people in need of a firearm may not have the money for a safe. By your reasoning, they shouldn't have a gun if they don't have a $700 plus or minus safe. I guess he's just going, you know, average across the board kind of, uh, I guess, tractor supply cannon safe um, price there, because that's about what they average, 700 and up. But anyway, um, I value your, I value you as a freedom loving person and enjoy your content. Please do not go down that particular road. So now I am not going down that particular road. My statement was not anti 2A. Matter of fact, my statement was fully pro 2A. Because I'm not saying that everyone should have a safe. What my main point, like I said, with very little context in that video, my main point was that if he has the pistol, he should have the means to secure it. So YouTube's probably going to get me for talking about dollar prices and guns, but let's say that the pistol that hit the road, I don't know, let's say it was the Taurus, this GX4 here. Let's say that that's what hit the road. When I bought this one, I bought it with my own money. I paid taxes and I bought an extra mag and whatnot. And I was about 500 bones out the door. Naturally, when you go to try to get rid of this thing in the future, you're gonna try to keep as much of your 500 as possible. I know you're not gonna get your taxes, you know, that's naturally just gonna take this 10% chunk right off the top of it. But let's say 450. Later down the road, you think you're gonna try to get 450. You list it for 450. Well. Let's think about 10% of the $500, the initial purchase, put toward properly retaining that gun. A $50 holster, right? So a $50 holster would have secured that gun and kept it off the highway. Why am I talking about 10%? Well, quite frankly, a highway is meant to be very durable and grippy. And it has rocks and it has glass chips and it has everything else in it so when this gun falls off this motorcycle and hits the highway what do you think that first booger on the muzzle is going to cost what how's that going to depreciate that gun this thing slaps down on its side and then steps sideways for i guess about 10 or 12 inches so this thing has gotten a little bit of road rash when you're going to get rid of this thing you have just cost yourself some money because you didn't have it properly retained right so that is part of my argument. I'm not being anti 2A, I'm not being elitist, I'm being common sense. Not as in common sense gun control, I am just being commonsensical in the fact that if you have purchased something, you really do need to find a better way to retain it. 
you know, and I mentioned the Taurus GX4 earlier, the little GX4. It is a pretty decent budget offering, but even at that low price, you see this box, you could actually fly with this box. I'm making a point here. This box has two locking hasps. For no added dollars, this box leaves the gun store with you. And all you have to have is $10 worth of locks. Actually, let's uh, adjust that for inflation. Just kidding. But anyway, $10 worth of locks. Check this out, man. You just drop these locks right here through these hasps and just give it a nice little click. There's one over here on this side. And like I said, this would be TSA approved. You could fly on an airplane with this. Think about children. Oops. Could your child get that lock out of that hasp and do something unauthorized? I know I had a buddy, I consider him a really good friend, but he was telling me one time, he's like, yeah, I just keep the pistol in there with the safety on it. Well, anyway, my son was very young. Jay was very young. And I took him and I said, can I see your pistol? And he hands me his pistol. So the first thing I did, dropped the mag. I went ahead and cleared this thing. I let the slide back down. This is a 1911. It's a T-Saw stainless match. Very nice pistol. But I took that 1911 and I put the safety on. So I took and I was like, hey, come here, bud. So here comes my little boy. And I took and I said, uh, I handed him the pistol. The first thing he does is goes wipe, click, that simple. My buddy, I don't know if he ever bought a lockbox, but at that point, I had made him a believer about the safety thing. But now, even this tea sauce right here. So this tea sauce, this is the stainless match. Now, it's at a little bit of a pri higher price point. And you see this. We have got a locking hasp right here. For zero added dollars, we take our adjusted for inflation padlocks, and we put them right there in those hasps and we lock it up. So simply enough, unauthorized users are not getting into this thing. How am I also being pro 2A by saying that? Well, quite frankly, this lady, the teacher that her child shot and everybody else involved with that mess probably would have gladly gone back in time and slipped two $20 bills for a cheap lockbox or put two adjusted for inflation padlocks on that case. So in a roundabout way, advocating for securing a firearm or weapons retention, something like that, it is actually very pro to A. We've got a whole swath of people in this country that would love to take our 2A rights. They would absolutely love to see those go away. They're lobbying for it, they're pushing for it, they're voting for it, and quite frankly, every time something bad happens with a gun, when an unauthorized person gets a hold of this gun and something bad happens, it just gives so much more fuel to that side. So, quite frankly, if I say that you have a firearm and you need to set aside a little bit of money to secure it, I'm not being anti-2A. Y'all have a wonderful day. I love you.